coming up on Fernand's live show, Show Extra. One fun fact that really made me feel like, okay, I'm not in Sweden anymore. The props are held outside, just in the open air. And in Sweden, I mean, the props would have been destroyed in an hour. It's not raining. <laughs> Hello, hello, party people. Welcome to Fernand's live show, Show Extra. Yeah, that's quite a name. I must fix that. Anyway, welcome to the show and welcome to an extended interview with the multi-camera director of the American Song Contest, Robin Hofwander. Now, if you're a Eurovision fan, or a Melody Festival fan, or a tele geek, or a Swedish tele geek in particular, that's certainly a name you recognise. With over 20 years in the multi-camera directing game, he came along with the founders of the American Song Contest, that's Krista Bjorkman, Peter Setzman, Anders Lehmann, and Ola Meltzig. And uh, he was part of a directing duo, looking after no less than 56 performances. Yeah, that's no easy feat. There's so much we covered, which forms my deep dive episode into the contest. But here, for your listening pleasure, as we talk about Eurovision know-how, Eurovision camera angles and more, is my extended chat with a multi-camera directing kingpin that's the director of the American Song Contest, Robin Hofwander. You're listening to Fernand's live show show extra, going behind the scenes of live TV. You've woken up, it's a day after the final, you're a little bit hungover, so I'm guessing the show must have gone great, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a good show, absolutely. Uh, and for me, it was like the, the grand finale of being in Hollywood for 10 weeks. So, yeah, I, I, I needed to celebrate before going home. <laughs> absolutely. And so, take us right back to the very beginning. How did you get involved in this, essentially, this 10-week adventure in Hollywood? Well, uh, since since I work on Melody Festival and uh, and have, have been working closely with Christy Bjorkman for eight years, uh, I obviously heard about this adventure before it it, it actually happened. So I, I've been hearing rumors about it for a few years uh, and uh, been told like, when it happens, you will be involved. And I was like, yeah, okay, we we'll, whatever, we will see. <laughs> Uh, but then, uh, beginning of, of uh, last summer, um, I actually got an email from, from the production company over here uh, saying, we want you on board. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from that point, uh, I was working on the production. Um, and yeah, uh, the, the, oh, the only thing was that I didn't have my visa cleared. So, and, and that took too long. I bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, that, that didn't go through until January. So that was a bit too close for, <laughs> for my well-being. But, but everything, uh, everything fell into place and here I am. Here you are. And was there a moment where you, where you thought, yeah, this is probably not going to happen. This, you know, it's probably just another dream. Or was there some inkling maybe thought, okay, this could actually kick off. Well, you know what? I, I had so many moments during the process that I felt like, okay, I want to get up, get, out, uh, get up on the rooftop and scream. <laughs> but, but still there was like, okay, I don't have the visa yet and this could go wrong and this could happen. And so, so I never really got the chance to celebrate that I got this amazing job because I always felt like, okay, it, it could fall apart at any moment. So actually, it wasn't until I, I took my last COVID test before my flight, <laughs> and, and that was negative, that I could, okay, it's actually happening. I'm, I'm flying. Excellent. So it must have been really exciting right up to the last moment, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. And of course, you used to direct some big shows, from Eurovision to Midi Festival and to uh, all the other major television shows in Sweden. How does this compare to the massive history and massive um, productions you worked on? Uh, I mean, size-wise, it's 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 a fourteen-camera production, so it's not huge in that sense. Uh, but the production is massive in in the sense of the amount of persons working with it, uh, and also in the 
size and quality of the set builds and it, I think for the first time ever I've it's the first time I've been on a show where you could ask for almost anything and it's like sure yeah we'll make that happen um, and th that is pretty cool but but it, the size of the production isn't huge but compared to Eurovision it isn't as big uh, the stage is as big as the Eurovision stage, maybe bigger, uh, but the venue is so much smaller. So it, it, it's you can't compare it like that. We had like 250 or 300 persons in the audience. Uh, so it's, it, it's more of a studio production. And a lot of uh, people online, Euro fans, American Song Contest fans, they've uh, likened this to be more like a national selection as opposed to the grandeur of Eurovision. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Do you think it's accurate that way or is there there's some truth in that? Well, yeah, I, 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 I think it's some truth to it. It's, I, I also compare it more to Melody Festival and than Eurovision. Uh, but I, I think that is like the first season it needs time to to grow into this sort of regional state versus state thing um i guess uh but yeah it, in in many senses it, it 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 is comparable to melody festival and uh with the the, the qualifiers and the semi-final and the uh, the grand finale so in that sense it's more like melody festival and then than the Eurovision, but I, I would say it's a blend of, of both. As you've seen, there have been some incredible performances and visual experiences we've seen on screen from uh, Nevada's all crazy, all singing, all lights um, adventure through to um, Nico, I think it's Alabama, with a simple one camera, steady cam shot. Um, yeah. what, was, what and how was your involvement with the creative teams in taking uh, dreams and making it a reality? Well, we, we've been having uh, creative meetings, look and feel meetings uh, throughout. I, th I think we had the first one in October. Um, and I mean, 56 songs, it's a lot. It's mm -hmm. more than Eurovision, mm -hmm. quite a lot more. Um, so it, it has been a handful. And we, 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 ha we have three creative teams. Uh, performance producers uh, who had split all the 56 uh, states, all, all the 56 performances. Um, so they have uh, pitched their, well, the treatment for, for each performance uh, to the look and feel group and we have discussed it and uh, talked about what is doable or not and what what would fit in within the budget. Um, and yeah, so, so we have discussed it and talked about the ideas as a, as a creative group, a core team. Going on from that, what were your easiest and your most, conversely, your most challenging um, performances to direct? If you had any. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, uh, some performances are more challenging. I can't really recall, but the hardest ones are the ones where you don't feel it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's rarely due to technical stuff or this is so tricky because I need to do this and that. Uh, as long as you are feeling it, it's easy. But when you are not, then it becomes hard to, to direct music. So just there just are some like the rhythm of the vocals, yeah. the pattern of stuff could make it tricky. Like okay, here's the here's the one, here's the beat, but the song doesn't start until here. So what do I do with this part uh, where you have sort of have to fill the gaps with shots? That, that can be hard, but I, I don't recall any, any song in particular. I know um, working, I guess, as a multi-camera director, um, I know you're familiar with Q-Pilot this year, I'll say this year, but American Song Contest uses live edit. Um, yeah. How is this, uh, I guess, I guess in some way to keep it, but how is this sort of make your visual dreams make it, I guess, that much more effective on screen? Was there sort of like a, I don't know, sort of a learning curve? Was it a joy to use? How was it with the American Song Contest? For them to use live edit or for yeah, me? Yeah, for yourself to... and uh, the rest of the team. Well, for, for, for me to use uh, live edit is, is a must on a show like this, like, like Eurovision. 
due to consistency and like the, the production process uh, of the performances with viewing rooms and discussing shot numbers and it just makes everything so much easier yeah. um, so but but for but for most most of the americans some some of them had been using qpilot before so they were used to the way of thinking uh, but for some it was uh, totally new and for my uh, co-director who, who is an American uh, it was a new, I, I new thing Ivan right yeah exactly Ivan yeah. Mm. Uh, so to him it was totally new so I've, I've been there like supporting him in, in the adventure of learning to use such a system but I I would never do a show without it even even if I we do the cuts manually and don't have it hooked up but I always prepare my my shots in a performance in in live edit, just because it's so much easier than to do with the, the old school way. Of course, right, yeah. Now you mentioned earlier there's 14 cameras. Uh, what were the cameras? I, I remember seeing a couple of uh, cranes in there as well, a couple of jibs, a couple of steady cams. What was the list? Yeah, I, I can go through them uh, from number one. Uh, one, one was uh, an ordinary jib, just a crane, and Number two was a rake close-up camera. Uh, three frontal close-up. Four frontal close-up. Five uh, slightly higher angle uh, uh, frontal, more more of a wide shot camera. Uh, six uh, six was a tower cam uh, center downstage. Okay. Uh, seven was the rail cam downstage, and eight. Uh, let me think. Yeah, eight. Eight was the overhead overhead track track camera. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, the the Eurovision camera. Yeah, of course. I really I really want I really wanted to get that in just for the Eurovision look. Yeah, it's sort of slow zooming right from the top. Kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and nine uh, nine was a rake closer camera from from stage left and 10 was the super techno uh, 11 and 12 steady cams 13 14 handhelds it's right, so quite a range of toys um, and uh, what's the average number on Melody Festival then uh, is it about the same number or is it the same number uh, we have we have usually have like 10 10 cameras okay all right so in your opinion when it comes to productions like this um, are more cameras better, like heading into twenties and that? Well, not thirties, but that kind of thing. Or is there like a sweet spot? I get, or does it really depend on the production? I mean, it it, it depends. The the reason uh, I felt the need for more cameras here is due to standing audience. Yeah. That makes a difference. On on Melody Festival, we have sitting audience, mm -hmm. and that lets you move cameras around and you can have pedestals just moving around within the audience but but when you have a standing mosh pit you can't really have cameras there in the same way so you're not as flexible in, in positioning cameras so the cameras become fixed where they are and then you need more to cover more angles um, so that, that is part of the reason why we have a lot of cameras on, on Eurovision yeah, uh, because it's huge. It's a huge venue. It's a standing audience, uh, and for that reason, you need like you need this angle, and you need this angle, and you need this angle. So it comes many many cameras just to cover it. But of course, I like many cameras. It's fun. Yeah. But uh, but it can get too much, and and it depends. I mean, if if you're doing a show where you prepare all the shots in live edit or Q pilot. Then you can have a hundred cameras. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But 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 there is a point where they become too many to actually see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so so if you are winging a show, uh, just going by feel, then twenty is too much. I think. Yeah, you could do fifteen, but somewhere around that is it's probably the the most. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. And off the back of this, I know every production can be really inspiring and you may have some ideas. I'm sure there'll be some ideas from ASC or Take Three to your other whether you uh, Melody Festival the next year or your next production, right? Or is that? Yeah, 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 sure. I've I've learned a lot of stuff, uh, both good and bad. Um, and I think I think one one really good thing they do here is that they have the light designer in the OB truck. Yeah. I think that is wonderful. I don't know if you do that in the UK, but I in in Sweden we we don't. Mm. The light designer is always in the in the venue at at the front of the house. Yeah. Um, and I know on, on Melody Festival and when you you try to get in contact with him, like okay, we need to change this, so could we go darker here or whatever? Mm. It's like come for Robin, come for Robin you never get a response and here i can just turn around hey noah could we la 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 yeah sure so it's it's very easy and i think i think that is also that is also what is relevant to light designer it, it is what happens on screens yes yeah it, because it's a tv show so there's no reason to sit in the venue and like ooh, look at all these beams it's beautiful when the camera don't see them so i so i think it makes a lot of sense to to have the light designer in the in the truck. Nice. And I was about to, I guess, continue from there. Um, are there any other major uh, differences, I would say, between how um, um, this production is run versus like a massive European production, Eurovision or media festival? Then? I, I I think that decisions are made later here. It's like they are more easy going with it. <laughs> right, it's yeah. like. It'll be okay. Mm. Uh, where I feel like, okay, but we should decide this now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so th that is a difference. And I guess that's maybe cultural America versus Europe. Uh, I, th I think we maybe are more nitpicky and in need of control. And, and here they are like, it, it, will, it will be good. Awesome. Just a few more questions. Um, did you have any favorites at all? Ones that you were hoping to win from the very start to the, to the finals? Well, the favorites I have are not that I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them to win. It's more mm. like these are really fun to do. Yeah. I want yes. to do them yeah. again. Mm. <laughs> uh, and I mean, Alexa was one of them. I felt first, first week like, okay, this performance is so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think we nailed it pretty much the first week. Uh, so that one was fun. And also I like Crystal Method was so fun to do. Uh, crazy. Um, and I did a lot of like jump zoom cuts uh, in, in live edit, yeah. um, which was great. Um, well, there, there, there have been quite a few good songs, but the, I mean, songs like, I mean, Crystal Method, that is so up my alley musically. It's, it, it is what I, I like electronic music. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what I listen to at home. So, so that really suited me. Um, but you, you have, you get sort of a professional music taste, like, okay, I can do something with this. It has a lot of like, beats and shifts and stuff that you can sort of hook up on and do cuts or light cues with so, mm -hmm. so you, even what i personally maybe think is bad music professionally i can enjoy it because it's fun to work with mm. i'm guessing there might be also an interesting challenge as well where as you say uh, music may you may not enjoy you're thinking okay how can i make this fun for yourself kind of thing or well, other elements of that yeah yeah, but it's it's what I, I talked about in the beginning. If you feel it, then it's easy. Yeah. And when and when you're not, it, it becomes harder. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts? You reckon there'll be, there'll be a, a second season, and you reckon it'll be brought back? Well, I, I would hope for a second season, um, but I I don't know. I am not in the loop <laughs> of, on that. But sure, I hope for it. It would be so fun to to get back here and work again. Awesome. And of course, you, uh, Krista, Anders, uh, Ole Meltzig, and who else is there? Was there three and Peter Setman. Peter Setman. Obviously, a huge Swedish contingent. I guess it must have been a nice sort of, I don't know, a, a, a familiar feel type thing within the contest. Was it like an intention? I mean, 
for for me it was it's been wonderful having them here uh but the thing is they they are as executive producers they are sort of floating on top of the production and i have been right in the middle of it uh so it's it's been challenging and and exciting to to be there <laughs> and like i i know stuff that they haven't heard yet <laughs> so first it's like oh what okay um so it, it's been kind of fun to, to sort of be the only swede to dive into the production um, yeah. and and also i mean just experience to be here in hollywood i i joined the dga uh, director's guild of america Awesome. Um, and they told me we mainly get Brits. <laughs> You're the first Swede. Representative. <laughs> I was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I guess, and, and I guess, looking through to Eurovision, which is about half an hour from now, I'm, I'm assuming you'd be watching from where you are, right? Uh, I don't plan to actually. I'm, I'm gonna pack and clean up my Airbnb here and. Get ready to fly back home on, on Thursday. Do you know if you're going to be involved in that? Because I know um, some directors actually fly in um, and they're sort of involved with the sort of creativeness, but I don't know. I guess at this point, would it be a bit too late for in this case, or would it be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this year, it's, it's the first year since 2013 um, that I'm not involved at all in mm. Eurovision. So you, usually I go with the with the Swedish delegation just to o- oversee the directing and come with suggestions and, and changes and stuff like that. So I've been a part of the Swedish delegation since 2014. And, and last year I also helped out with Cyprus and Spain and yeah. Austria and a few others uh, yeah. to do their script for, <laughs> for the Eurovision. Do you miss it? Do you feel like you've missed it this year, or you feel like, yeah, I've got something big guys in America to take care of? <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, of course, I, I would love to go. It's it's so much fun with the Eurovision. I love it, and it's, I mean, it's strange. I I have never been a Eurovision fan, but through the years, it's like you've become part of this family, <laughs> and just by working with the Eurovision and Melody Festival for so long, it's like, hey. I have this trivia about this and that Eurovision-y. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I've become this nerd mm-hmm. of a thing I'm not really into. <laughs> so, it, but but I, I love Eurovision, uh, and yeah, I would have loved to go, but I, like coming here uh, felt more important. Awesome. One thing that tells the story of the size of the production is that we. We were on, on Universal, Universal Studios um, in stage 24 and 25. And 24 and 25 is where we had, had the set and where we did the broadcast from. And then we had stage 26. And 26 uh, was prop building uh, just for performances. Wow. So whole shop, prop shop, where they build and paint and weld and everything. So everything was made in-house. Uh, and stage 27 uh, uh, was prop holding area and crew catering. And then we had stage 747 uh, for red carpet and m M&M m lounge. Uh, and where in, in Europe, I mean, on Eurovision we have there are a few trucks. You, you often have two OB units uh, for the redundancy. Uh, here, here we only had one OB unit, but we also had uh, a unit for EVS, uh, a unit for screens, uh, D3 disguise of um, LED operations, and a unit for sound, and a unit for COVID testing, and a unit for... I don't even know. We, it, I think there were like eight trucks outside the, the, the venue. Um, so, yeah, pretty big. And, and one fun fact that really made me feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not in Sweden anymore, uh, is that all the props are held, do, for the show, the props are held outside, just in the open air. Ah. It's like, okay, it's not raining here. <laughs> it's it's sunshine. 
you can trust it. Absolutely. And in, and, and in Sweden, I mean, the props would have been destroyed in an hour. Uh, <laughs> so, and so, one benefit, I guess, I, of being in, Sh- in, in sunny LA, of course. Yeah, exactly. So you, you could see like set pieces with backline and lights and pyro all rigged and prepped and ready, just standing there outside for hours. Wow. It's not raining. <laughs> I like that. Something to end on. It's not raining. Fantastic stuff. Ah, Tak Sumikya. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Yeah, great chatting with you. Cheers. Thanks so much. You're listening to Fernand's live show show extra, going behind the scenes of live TV. So that's it. A fantastic insight into creative mind. That was Robin Hofwander. I quite like the bit with the, uh, the Eurovision camera and how the LA weather is perfect for Brazilian props. And as you heard, he was also about to fly back out to Sweden at the time about to catch the first semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2022. So very, very exciting stuff for a busy man. Do check out my full deep dive into the makings of the American Song Contest, what I call my ultimate making of guide. And of course, please give us a like and a subscribe, and of course, a follow wherever you're listening on. I'm on all the socials, that's Fernand's live show show. Until next time, people, as I always say, always hit record and stay live. Peace. <laughs>